your host, Stephen K. Bannon. Back in the war room, Dave Bratt with Batia Unger Sargon. Uh, Batia, I just teed you up uh, with some populist charts. Uh, please, please add your wisdom and insights. Uh, what is coming our way in this country if we don't uh, course correct uh, and get get the middle class some relief? Batia, welcome to the war room. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here uh, in the absence of our national hero, Stephen Bannon. It's an utter outrage what yes. they've done to him. And I know you don't need me to say that and your audience doesn't need to hear that from me. But as somebody who's, you know, from the left, I want you to know that it is obvious and everybody can see it. It is election interference. They knew that they had to take him out of the scene. Otherwise, Donald Trump would win. And I, I just, I, I am so angry about it and so honored to be here and praying for him, of course, every single day. The other thing I wanted to say before getting to the point is I just want to endorse something your last uh, guest said. So last um, Shabbat, last Saturday, in every single synagogue in the world, we read Deuteronomy 17:14, which reads, Ki sabo el ve'amarta asima alai melech, which in English means when you enter the land and you say, God is saying to the people of Israel, you say you want a king, meaning it is our choice who we elect as our representative. So that idea is completely there in the Bible, that we are yep. the sovereign, yep. we the people. And so I just wanted to endorse that from our point of view as well. Um, the chart you right. yes. pointed to are deeply important, and let me explain why. The American working class is not resentful. They don't have class resentment. They don't hate the rich. These are not people who are consumed by envy in the way that the top 20% are consumed by the envy of the 1%. No, what has happened is that democratic administration after democratic administration after democratic administration has stolen the ability of working class Americans, people who work and work and work themselves to the bone who don't have a college degree, who work with their hands for a living, doing the jobs we would all simply cease to exist without them doing. These uh, democratic administrations have made it impossible for these hardworking Americans to achieve the most modest version of the American dream. And while doing that, while plundering the middle class in an upward transfer of wealth to their rich friends, they have smeared the working class for objecting as racists or xenophobes or toxic masculinity, right? They have created all sorts of smear campaigns against men and working class people to distract from the fact that they have stolen their ability to feed their families. And so they create this language of social yep. justice to make it look like they are the good guys for stealing your yep. children's future. That is the move. And you are absolutely right about those charts. Nine of the 10 richest counties in America now vote for Democrats. 65% of Americans making more than $500,000 a year now are Democrats. 97% of donations coming out of Silicon Valley go to Democrats. 96% of journalists donate to Democrats when they donate, okay? Wall Street gave more money to Joe Biden than they did to Donald Trump. And here's the kicker. Let me read you a tweet that came out of the Kamala Harris campaign yesterday. Kamala's wins, it goes breaking. New reporting shows that not one Fortune 100 CEO is supporting Donald Trump. This is the Democrat bragging that the rich want her. I tweeted back, did Donald Trump write this tweet, right? I mean, what could be a better endorsement right. of Donald Trump than the fact that the wealthy want Harris, that the Obamas want Harris, that Dick Cheney wants Harris, she's doing the work for him. Unbelievable. Yeah, that just great reporting and, and insights right there, Bacha. Thank you uh, for all of that. And but so the key question that remains is, you know, all this, uh, the war room knows this. But will this break through? Is is it 
getting through. The inflation numbers, I think, are getting through at the, at the uh, supermarket, uh, at the gas stations, the rents, the housing, the interest rates. So those things are getting through. Uh, but what you just said is profound, right? They're running on the social justice narrative while they haven't given anything. The inner city schools, et cetera, are all owned by the far left. All political views are my own. Uh, but it, it, is this message getting through to people, the one you just articulated so well? It's definitely getting through to black men. It's definitely getting through to Hispanic voters. Donald Trump was the first president in 60 years to shrink income inequality and the wealth gap, okay? Donald Trump yeah. created a multiracial, multiethnic populist revolution. Um, the problem is, is that there are a lot of rich white women and they vote on abortion. So, and we know that rich people tend to show up at the polls more than poor people, who of course are struggling much more and more than working class yeah, people. Yeah. We all remember what the country was like in 2018 and 2019. All of the divisiveness that allegedly existed there was between the elites and the working class who Donald Trump had elevated and they could not stand that. Now remember in 2019, the bottom 25% of wage earners saw a 4.5% wage increase and the top 25% of wage earners only saw a 2% wage increase. That's why they want to destroy yep. him. They yep. cannot stand that he made their BS college degree worth a little bit less than it is under democratic establishment. So that's, I think, what the stakes are of this election. And of course, your viewers and listeners don't need me to tell you this. I learn from them all the time. Yeah, well, that's very humble of you, but I've heard very few people lay it out as well as you just have, and as you've always done uh, with Stephen K. Bannon, 30 seconds to go. Uh, how big uh, of a change does the RFK Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard uh, piece make in this election? Huge. I've seconds. been saying from the beginning, Donald Trump is the unity candidate. He's running a consensus campaign, which everybody would be able <laughs> yeah. to see if the media wasn't yeah. trying to destroy him. And this proves it. Awesome. Batya Unger Sargon. Uh, check out her book. Uh, go read her. Uh, this is not going away, folks. This is a long run economic trajectory that's been with us for too long. It hasn't been solved. Uh, there's one candidate uh, standing in the breach uh, who's already made inroads against the most powerful forces in the world the globalists themselves, uh, the elitists, the billionaire class, the Federal Reserve, everyone that's fought against you. Uh, choice could not be clearer. All political views are my own, and I'll be with you again on...